Okay, I am Squarks, and I've decided to read a few more gloriously terrible fanfics. Um, I've got three here for you t for you today. Um, all these were requested by Tanel66 of friendshipismagic.org, and if I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, he's probably going to kill me. Um, okay, so in no particular order, here's the first one. It is called "My Tits Are on Fire." Um, fuck. Um, okay, well. It's like four lines. Twilight woke up to find Spike stroking his dragon hood with his free hand and drinking Big Mac's cock with the other, but he has claws so he shredded his cock up just like a melon and Twilight screamed, my tits are on fire with Spike got up and started to suck her cute pony tits and played with his still hard cock. After about fish, I can't read that. He said, hey Twilight, can I face fuck you? And she knelt down letting the dragon get his cock right in her face and... By the power-packed taste of Spermy D, he coming so hard, his nut shriveled and rarity got only a dribble. No comment on that one, just gotta keep going. Um, okay, this is Twilight Loves Books. Twilight was all alone in her room one day. She was feeling lonely because her friends weren't actually real. Spike was just a spiky purple dildo that Twilight talked to every now and again. <laughs> But she didn't need them anyway. She had her true love surrounding her. She went up to her bookcase and picked out a story called Brenda and Tracy Have Sex and threw it sexily on the bed. She opened it up and licked the front first page and groped her book its book boobs. Oh, books, you're the only one who understands me, she moaned. And she stuck her horn into its book vagina. Twilight had hot book sex with her love and orgasm and scream, Butterfly in the Sky, it collapsed face first next to Spike. Dear Princess Celestia, today I learned you don't need friends to be happy because I have books. Books, books, oh, I love books. Oh, God, I'm so alone. Oh, my God, Tannel, what the hell are you doing to me, man? Okay, this is the third and final one. Um, well, this one's a little longer. This might actually have a narrative. This is the unfortunate events in Ponyville that led me to not finish the statement, comma. Um... Oh, it's got an author's note. For anyone interested in buying this New York Times bestseller, please have an envelope with $400, each dollar labeled Tiffany, under your under your nearest black friend. Please, oh please, the drug cartel is after me. I need to pay them off. So, yeah. Um, if you're interested in buying, you should probably get on that, because, you know, the drug cartel is kind of... Um, they're mean. They're not very nice people. Okay, and the story begins. One time in a horror race of barren wasteland, there lived ponies. The putrid place was aptly named Ponyville. In this town, our heroes set out to the next city on their quest to earn their fifth gym badge. Oh, Spike called out Twilight Sparkle. Get your fat black ass out on your bed and get back to work, she said happily. She was happy that the thought of Spike had no rights in their world, for he was a different skin color, and everybody knows that different colored people aren't really people. <sighs> this is going to be one of those fanfics, isn't it? Spike intended to get out of his bed, but he was drowning in the vast twenty mile lake that was his flat that was his fat. He attempted to swim to the other side of his bed, however his fat ate him up and just like he ate out Rarity's corpse. He took a piece of pizza from his enormously sized dragon breast. He attempted to eat said pizza, though infested though infested with the remains of genital sweat, but he couldn't fit in his pie hole due to the amount of food pouring out of his mouth due to the fact that there were no more room in his stomach. He shoved it up his anal cavity and died of pleasure. Spike, you silly n-word. Don't make me get the fun Hasbro playtime whip winky face copyright. Twilight looked down only to see a hole in the ground. The whole Spike would make love to every night before he went back to work at the apple farm. Not sweet up Lakers. Spike maintained his own pros prosperous apple farm to feed himself because Twilight did not have a single shit to Spike. Twilight began to sit in this shit in Spike's mouth, leaving such a hole. Except this one time, she did give a shit. She looked bent over and opened the hatch on what is now a trap door of a hole. She found what it led down to, straight down. She found that it led straight to another episode. However, Twilight does not process the ability to break the walls of the fourth kind, so she is now Pinkie Pie, and nothing previously said ever happened. Oh, well, that's good news. Back to the story. Everybody was in line for the Apple family's Zap Apple Cider, which was really just normal cider because Granny Smith passed away in secret, making it 
Maggie had died with her, and Apple Bloom was taken as wolf food, being mistaken as a rabbit. Next to the line was Drearly, who was quite thirsty. Being a school teacher, all of the tight, tight cooch in her class strained her of bodily fluids rather quickly. She was attempting to pull her money out of her pockets, because ponies have pockets. After going through an assortment of death threats for kids and sex toys, she began to beat up some filly for her lunch money. With money and hoof, Charlie bought some of the sweet, sweet, piss-colored apple drank. Applejack was busy inbreeding with her cousin Brayburn, so she asked Big Mac to, so she asked Big Mac to retrieve the shit of a century. Big Mac recognized the G3 whore and ejaculated in her cup. Cheerily being quite familiar with the taste of Big Mac's stallion sperm, you know they were married. Went straight, went straight into a state of pure rage and sex. She silently seduced. The monarch ruler known as Celestian took on the role of king. However, Celestia was not feeling rather ill. Celestia was feeling rather ill, and she knew why. Cheerily had poisoned her vaginal fluids. Celestia died of a rug burn the day after, not poison. And the sun died with her. Luna, being the next in line, was so happy that she died. The two lesbian sisters were thrown into Spike's grave, and no funeral was held. Prince Blueballs... Being the last remaining relative of Celestia's and Luna's one night set stand was lit on fire and shoved into the fat corpse of Spike through his pizza filled ass. Cheerily was now the ruler of Equestria. Her first order of business free rape for everybody. After a long awkward orgy with no penises, Cheerily was bored of this only five percent male planet. I agree with that, that's kinda weird. The gene pool was terrible, and everybody, every pony would just begin to die off because of all the ponies who were all male got get rid of all the semen through clumping, so there's no way to reproduce. Cheerily decided to bomb Equestria, however, the coordinates were wrong because hooves cannot type well. What, an atten what was an attempt to of the coordinates of Equestria came out to be a very long string of numbers and letters, or Manhattan as you may know it. The nuke destroyed all of Hiroshima, ending Pony War II before the, between the Japanese and all of Manhattan. The only survivor was none other than Daring Dew, the Indiana Jones ripoff of a pony. She took cover in a nearby freezer. She survived the blast, but the freezer could not be opened from the inside, so Daring, De so Daring froze to death. 200 years after the drastic yet hilarious sonic rain nuke, Sun Rainbow Dash inert, emerged from Bank Vault 101, a.k.a. the asshole of the decapitated purple dragon known as Spake. Only to be met with by a world full of world fully overrun by. Period. After several musicals regarding who can call upon when you're just in distress, Rainbow Dash owners Applejack emerged from the seas on Rarity's fashionable dead body. Simply fabulous. Well, howdy there, you sugar slayer, Applejack said as she threw Rarity over her shoulder, much like a scarf, because even in death, Rarity was fashionable. I sure hope you don't mind, but I'm throwing these here ponies to you for the rest of your life. Applejack handed, Ra 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 Applejack handed Rainbow Dash a dictionary, and inside was Apple Bloom and Sweetie Bill. So off Rainbow, Apple Bloom, and Sweetie Bill went. They ventured through the Everfree Forest, and since it's and since it's non-existent in the Everfree Forest, the time went back 200 years to before Fallout Equestria happened. They came to a nearby bush and peeked through it as if it was a window. Seeing several pedophiles looking through the same window, there was one particular thing that interested them. They came across a town barber and his brain-damaged friend, who was also retarded, Snips and Snails. Gee, sure is born around here, stated Snails. My colt, true pieces of... Oh my god, he's really doing this. My colt, true piece is what all true warriors strive for, replied Snips as he was angrily stabbing himself in the left torsal fin. I just wonder what Discord's up to, Snails lashed out. They finished reenacting their role playing and went straight to crossing sticks. Their penises began to light a near tree a nearby tree on fire, which just happened to have Pinkie Pie in it as she was giggling at the ghosties. The pink flavored smoke rose up. How is something pink flavored? The pink flavored smoke rose up in the comma, causing all of Cloudsdale to begin accepting Earth What? Causing all of Cloudsdale to begin accepting Earth ponies into their exclusive academy regardless of the fact that they all died because they could not stand on clouds. And when they tended to fly away they all plummeted down into the lake of Spike's Fat where they would be fucked by the one known as Stephen Fagnant or Magnet. Apple Bloom stopped clomping and jumped out of the bush to kill sn snails and snips for 
Apple Bloom was a hard-working Christian man with Christ-vague morals, and he believed homosexuality to be a crime punishable by being made into a pony-made Hasbro copyright toy. Onward, Rainbow Dash and Sweetie Belle did go into a world where fun did flow, they kept their heads high and they kept their heads low, and they kept their dicks low. The murderous journey flew by, yet this poem sucks and I would prefer it if Sweetie Belle did die. And so she did. Um, okay, that was terrible. Um, Tannel, I hate you. Go die in a fire. That was awful. Why would you do that to me? Oh, until next time, um, I'm Squarks, and that was three very bad fanfictions.